1778, the war had moved into the South. And in December of 1778, the British commander, Henry Clinton, had captured the city of Savannah, Georgia, and eventually the entire state of Georgia. And in May of 1780, Clinton also gained control of Charleston, South Carolina, in a battle that destroyed most of the American army in the South. General Cornwallis was then put in charge of maintaining the British stronghold in the South. Uh, Congress appointed General Horatio Gates, who had led troops to victory in Saratoga, to create a new Southern army. But unfortunately, they were very quickly defeated by Cornwallis. So in 1781, Congress replaced Gates with a new Southern general, uh, Nathaniel Green. And under Green's army, he was able to defeat the British at the Battle of Cowpen, South Carolina, and it was the first time in the war that the militia units were deployed in battle. Now, the Southern Patriots used their knowledge of the terrain to attack British communication and supply centers in small groups and escaping before they were caught. Today, we refer to this as guerrilla warfare, right? It's a system of warfare in which soldiers fight using techniques such as surprise, ambush, and disruption um, to be able to defeat their enemies. Um, the most well-known of these Southern Patriots who used this style of fighting was Marion's Brigade, uh, brigade led by Francis Marion, and that was the most successful guerrilla troops of the South. The British eventually fled the Carolinas due to um, Francis Marion and his men and because of how successful they were. He was then nicknamed the Swamp Fox because of the fact that he was so difficult to be able to catch. Um, eventually, the British then fled the, colony, the Carolinas because of that. Now, in early 1781, Cornwallis moved his troops to Yorktown, Virginia, on the banks of the York River. Supplies and money were running low, and he needed a port to be able to resupply his troops. Philadelphia and New York were controlled by the British. It was discovered that Benedict Arnold had been plotting to turn over a critical military fort that was West Point and conspiring to capture George Washington. So morale in the Patriot side was extremely low at this point. Um, so it was very important for the Patriots to get a victory. Washington decided to take this opportunity now that Cornwallis had moved his men and led his men and about 7,000 French troops that were led by Lieutenant General Rochambeau to surround Yorktown. The French Navy by this time had already arrived and was blocking off the Chesapeake Bay. And so after weeks of fighting, Cornwallis then had to surrender um, on October 19, 1781. There were many small battles that were left to fight, but the war was pretty much over after Yorktown, once Cornwallis surrendered. And so Benjamin Franklin, John Jay, and John Adams were sent to Paris to negotiate the end of the war. And so this is the Treaty of Paris of 1783, right? Not to be confused with the Treaty of Paris of 1763, which ended the Seven Years War, or AKA the French and Indian War. Um, instead, the 1783 Treaty of Paris is the one that ends the Revolutionary War. And so these were the terms of the Treaty of Paris. First, the US was free and independent nation, right? It was recognized that they were free and independent and the borders were set from the Mississippi River up to Canada and down to Spanish Florida because Florida was then returned to Spain, right? In return for the fact that Spain had helped the colonies, then the colonies went ahead and gave Florida back to Spain, which they had lost at the end of the French and Indian War. Second term, Americans could fish in the waters of British Canada, right? Up in the North, it would not prohibit Americans from being able to use those waters to fish and be able to supply their economy. Uh, debts would be repaid that they had owed. All captured slaves that were taken by the British would be returned. And then lastly, which was not an official term, but Congress agreed to recommend that any property that had been taken from the Loyalists be returned. However, um, a lot of that property was never returned and a lot of the Loyalists ended up fleeing the colonies anyway through the war and went to areas of Canada and Nova Scotia um, so a lot of that land was never really returned to the Loyalists. So these were the final terms of the Treaty of Paris, which then officially ended the war for American independence. And now the colonies were actually now free and independent states. <laughs>